and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on take of course we are broadcasting live straight from stockholm sweden and today we will be talking about yet another suspected exchange hack namely how one exchange was able to jump with six million over six million percent in uh, trading volume although having very few users and we actually have a report on that that is number one number two we're going to talk about ai artificial intelligence and icos which is a quite interesting topic because artificial intelligence can be used a lot in order to optimize the parameters of the ICOs. For example, the distribution of tokens, the distribution of private, public sale, and so on and so forth. We have an interesting article coming out there. And then we're also going to talk about Mike Novogratz and the fact that, you know what, his stock is tanking. And he also commented that he might have mis, uh, misread the markets. And the fact that, you know, we see this downward market continuing and continuing uh, didn't play him well in the stock market and guys amazing to see you here i see the chat rolling i see michael gulp very welcome guys i see pia vit vipurisi very welcome butcher that name absolutely we have Merdad Solomon coming into the house. We have DP. Also, I saw Fabrice. I saw VFU Burdick. D. Gibson. D. Gibson. Very welcome, guys. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into it, guys. And by the way, if you haven't, check out business.ivanotech.com for our business course. It's launching in October, but now it's like 50% discount. But moving on to the market, we have the following situation in the markets. It's, you know, it's red. It's uh, continuing this downward movement and uh, nothing, you know, it's not a cheerful market. Anyway, minus 4.15 in Bitcoin. We have uh, minus 4.16 in Ethereum, 0.18 Ripple red, uh, Bitcoin Cash 6.75 red. Let me actually make myself a bit bigger here. Bam. Um, we have EOS uh, 2. Point, yeah, you see a bit red numbers. You have uh, Cardano 9.5 red. Looking at the big winners, we have Emmercoin. Not really, no big winners, guys, today. No big winners. Only 6%, the biggest winner. And the big losers, one chain. 21 percent yeah 20 yeah some significant losers actually some significant losers seems that the market is going down once again in another leg downwards but today is all about the exchange today about the exchange that managed to increase its trade volume by six million percent in only three days in only three days and uh, it is quite significant because uh, you understand that this has become a very very common thing you cannot really trust exchange uh, exchange metrics you cannot really trust exchange uh, uh, statistics that you see on for example coin market cap and this is why it is very important to understand that most of the rankings are probably a bit manipulated probably a bit manipulated because you see news like this coming out for example here we you have a, a article from Toshi Times basically describing the situation with the exchanges and in particular big one so big one is an exchange which has uh, gained an astonishing increase of volume of 6 million percent, 6.3 million percent in a mere three days. And basically they managed to get in top three at coin market cap. Uh, now they have fallen from top three when this report came out, but they managed to get that top three according to uh, crypto exchange ratings. Uh, and so crypto exchange racing CER is this organization doing uh, this analysis and a few weeks ago we talked about another exchange doing the same thing but uh, now you see that they have a very very easy and very simple way of uh, uh, verifying whether an exchange is lying or not basically taking a look at active users and uh, uh, and trading volume and comparing it because it is easy to see active users you just go to similar web or you go to alexa ratings and you can enter any website and get an approximation of how many users that website has and then you compare it to uh, to the volume and to the trading volume on that exchange and you can see uh, if that is abnormal numbers if the ratio is abnormal between the active users and the trading volume or if it seems legit something else that they have seen is that uh, they use a bit of technical analysis and basically found inconsistencies between the volumes 
uh, spikes and price movements. So uh, if you use technical analysis, you can basically understand that um, the volume and price are correlated in some ways. But uh, with big one and uh, with this particular exchange, there was there were no correlations at all. Of course, uh, technical analysis is this debated topic whether you can actually draw any conclusions of it. But uh, in this report, they used it as a conclusion also. And basically, the crypto exchange ranking organization are very confident that you know what this is a is, this evidence serves as a strong evidence of volume manipulation and probably uh, and probably a big one has manipulated their trading volume and this is something to realize guys we are living in the crypto markets we're living in this crazy market where it is uh, very very lucrative to cheat because imagine big one cheating and getting all of the traffic uh, traffic from coin market cap of course that is extremely useful and of course all of the coins that want to be listed on uh, top 10 exchanges of course they're going to go to big one if they do not do a lot of research and if they do not check the numbers for themselves and you know listing on an exchange that is top 10 can be quite expensive quite expensive uh, <laughs> evidence serves evidence yeah guys yeah guys welcome to ivan on tech welcome to my english this is how we speak here but uh, i totally agree with you and by the way, guys, totally forgot to tell you, smash the likes if you haven't yet. If you're joining the stream, if you're learning something, be absolutely sure to smash the likes. Now, moving on. We have an interesting blog post and an interesting thread on uh, uh, Ether research. Basically, there is a forum for researchers on Ethereum. And I found this very, very interesting because I myself, I have a background in AI. Uh, I did masters in AI. And so I, I thought it was an interesting approach to ICOs. Namely, that you can use uh, AI in order to adjust parameters of, for example, ICOs or, for example, of block rewards or, for example, of other variables that are very important in the crypto space. You have these variables in the crypto space that can really decide the outcome of a coin, how the coin will uh, will survive or a coin will be successful or, or not. For example, the amount of tokens the private sale should get versus the amount of tokens the public public sales should get uh, and so on and so forth. You, you have all these different variables, all of these different values that are currently just picked uh, arbitrary. They're, currently those are arbitrary numbers that the team just picks by random, what, what they feel is a valid distribution, for example. But you realize that uh, there are better ways to do it. So crypto economic parameters are important for blockchain projects because they can have a significant impact on the future distribution of tokens. Yet most projects seem to be choosing this uh, arbitrary, just, you know, by feeling. For example, an ICOing project may decide to keep 10, 20, 50 or even 90% of its tokens, continue some of the... Uh, contribute some of the rest to development fund and have founders reward of X percent. So a lot of variables. You see, there are a lot of variables when it comes to ICOs, but also when it comes to, for example, Ethereum and when Ethereum wants to reduce the block reward from 3 to 0 0.8 Ethereum when Casper uh, goes live, when this first version of uh, Casper goes live. It's another very important variable. And how do you actually make sure that um, that variable is uh, is legit and that that variable is actually going to play well in this game theoretic environment that uh, crypto markets actually are and it's very hard to predict how a number will affect a cryptocurrency long term and how a decision may affect and basically what this person is saying is that all of these variables are hyper parameters and this is basically a word within the AI space uh, where you basically have a set of parameters that uh, affect a system or an environment and you want to find the best parameters you want to maximize the best uh, possible parameters and maximize the success rate of your parameters ba basically and the person here is uh, proposing a reinforcement learning model in order to train this uh, um, this particular mathematical model that they are proposing and basically they want to use AI and re reinforcement learning is a uh, branch of AI where you have the following situation you have an AI agent let me increase this you have an AI agent right here this is kind of the eye and uh, you have environment 
and this is the environment the agent is in so in that uh, in this case it could be the current market of ICOs it can be the current crypto uh, trend for example whether we are in a bear market or a bull market it's all about the uh, outside factors that the uh, that the agent um, is uh, present in uh, and by the way here's the interpreter here's basically uh, the uh, the part that in interprets how say interprets the uh, the actions of the agent. So uh, the agent is actually here. I did a mistake earlier. Th this is the agent, and the agent basically takes actions based on the environment. Agent takes a look at, at the environment and takes actions, and then this interpreter uh, either gives a reward or uh, decreases the reward. So if the interpreter uh, feels that the agent is doing good things uh, the agent gets rewarded and so this is kind of the mathematical model we are in where the agent basically tries different things tries to take different actions and then gets more or less reward for uh, for those actions and by getting the reward the agent can adjust adjust the way it makes decisions so this reward is basically what is making the agent learn and the agent is using the reward in order to adjust itself and so when the agent runs this you know this loop for maybe millions of times maybe billions of times if you have a really uh, really good model that has been trained well you know these deep learning mod uh, models you see nowadays being deployed by google and other uh, huge companies they, they have trained for weeks if not the even years with a lot of information a lot of data and a lot of actions were taken by this agent in a particular environment so basically basically in this case when we're talking about ICO parameters this agent would basically pick the parameters for example the agent would say you know private sale should be 20% or you know a public sale should be 30% and basically try different things take different actions and then the, uh, the this model would also simulate what kind of results that would give and basically make an, an approximation and this agent would be rewarded or, or or not rewarded depending on the outcomes and the whole idea is that this agent would become better and better at taking these actions and basically deciding these parameters and you know what i thought it was quite interesting quite interesting approach to a very hard problem that currently hasn't been solved in a good way at all because i personally know projects are just uh, picking these parameters randomly they don't think a lot about the parameters they don't take a mathematical approach they don't take a statistical and data driven approach at all it's mostly okay how do you feel like what what does feel the best in this particular case and of course feelings are not not data driven at all feelings are not data driven and therefore you shouldn't trust them you should trust data and by using for example reinforcement learning by using mathematics oh. crap guys the situation is that this this thing right here fell but we're back on track uh, and and by using for example reinforcement learning it would of course give more credibility to ICO projects uh, okay Let's take a look at the chat, what is happening in the chat. Electric Dreams Robot Agent. Ivan might sell you his boxers. We have some sexual conversation going on. How AI understand people's sentiment. So, you know, when it comes to sentiment, there is a lot of research being done, for example, analyzing the sentiment on social media when it comes to different projects. So, absolutely, AI can understand uh, people's sentiment why google give up their do no evil ethos i don't understand very good english <laughs> absolutely shit my notebook crashed All right uh okay anyway anyway guys we're moving on we're moving on to the final news of the day and the final news of the day is the fact that you have mike novogratz having a difficult week and we discussed that his uh, fund and his investment firm lost quite a bit of money during this uh, bear market and this is something to realize everyone is losing money everyone who's made a lot of money last year but uh, didn't sell of course are lo losing money now uh, but now you see the fact that they were listed on a canada-based tsx venture exchange some kind of Can canadian exchange 
and the picture doesn't look good because the stock of Galaxy Digital, which is uh, Mike Novogratz's firm, uh, you know, it opened at 2.7 Canadian dollars and this is 45% below 5 Canadian dollars at which investors had purchased it during a January private sale uh, private sale placement and began to go downwards as soon as the markets opened. So this is quite significant, you know, uh, this is just shows on the market sentiment even outside cryptocurrencies because when it comes to Galaxy Digital, it's all about institutionalizing, institutionalizing uh, cryptocurrencies, bringing more institutional investors to the crypto space. And of course, the market sentiment is quite negative currently. And something else to realize is that uh, uh, Mike is always positive, but he says, if I knew that if I knew what I know now, knew that crypto markets were going to swoon as much and it was going to take so long, I might have stayed private for another year or so and then gone public. So this is something to realize. It's all about judgment. How do you judge a particular market and for how long a particular market will remain in a downward or an upward trend and launching your project in a bearish market can be very harsh and this is true for ICOs this is true for example going public on uh, uh, on exchanges on public exchanges such as uh, Galaxy Digital and uh, this is definitely a big question mark and this is also why many ICOs have uh, basically frozen they they're not moving forward because they are waiting for a bigger opportunity in the markets and basically waiting for a better opportunity in order to enter the markets and the same is with a lot of partnerships something to realize as well many projects have good partnerships lined up but they are not revealing their partnerships because you realize that uh, that it might be better to wait it might be better to wait and just launch your partnership when the market is in an upward movement because you will gain a lot more momentum, a lot more attention and probably a lot more capital when you do that. But guys, that is really it. That is really it. And uh, th that is the news for today and the analysis for today. Obviously, I hope you learned something. I hope you are a bit smarter. I hope you understand reinforcement learning more and uh, why it is important for cryptocurrencies and why a lot of these variables and these parameters in the crypto space are important and they are just chosen randomly by gut feeling basically which of course should not be the case should not be the case so guys if you learn something uh, absolutely leave a uh, like under this video subscribe Press the bell button. I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a great, what is it? Have a great Friday. Yes, have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, I'll be back very, very soon. I'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central European Summertime. And I think we're going to do some GitHub analysis then. We're going to do some GitHub analysis. Okay, guys. Have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.